Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Saul Lopez and I am a freelance videographer and photographer based here in Los Angeles, California. If this is your first time here, I put out new videos every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time geared towards providing educational content for other freelance videographers and photographers. In today's video, I am gonna be talking about how I go about filming vlogs for my clients. Roll the intro. As I mentioned in my intro, I have been freelancing for the last four years professionally. And I actually have three clients that I make YouTube vlogs for. The first person being Roland Book III. He is best known for his role on NBC's Chicago Med as Dr. Noah Sexton. He was one of my first retainer vlog clients dating back to 2018. And I have had the privilege of just sort of documenting his life over the last three to four years going to press events with him, going to family gatherings, going to just traveling with him to different movie premieres, etc. He was one of my first YouTube vlog clients. My second client is my good friend, Michelle K. Hanabusa. She is the founder and CEO of a clothing line here in Los Angeles called We Are Uprisers, which you can find in PacSun stores nationwide across the US and online. I have been documenting behind the scenes of her creating this company for the last four years before even it was what it was. And that's been a very fulfilling experience, just getting to document all the behind the scenes of just everything she's gone through, which has been a lot. She's also the person that gave me my break into the creative industry, so I feel like I owe her my career, to be honest. So Michelle, if you're watching, thank you again. My final and most recent client, which I'm gonna be focusing on today, is Kevin Mejia. Kevin is a fitness trainer at a gym here in West Hollywood called the Dog Pound Gym. You've probably seen it on TMZ, The Hollywood Reporter. A bunch of celebrities go there and train at this gym. Kevin is one of the lead trainers there, and I've had the opportunity to film his vlog starting this year in 2021. Um, so it's been really fun. For one of Kevin's vlogs, he had TikTok stars Blake Gray and Jaden Hostler come over to his house and just play some pickup basketball with him and some of the other trainers from the Dog Pound Gym. So the first thing that I wanna go over is how to get clients to make YouTube videos for. So if you're a freelance videographer and you wanna make vlogs for other people, um, the best way to do that is to just reach out to everyone and anyone that you know. Luckily, I have a network of creative people who um, you know, are doing really cool things in life and were interested in doing vlogs earlier on. So that's how I originally got connected to my first clients in that sense. But with Kevin, we actually connected via Instagram. Um, I think I just DM'd him one day and I was like, hey, I'm a videographer, would love to make videos for you. Uh, I made a couple of videos for him first, just for his Instagram, and he let me know that he was interested in making a YouTube vlog series and wanted me to shoot it. Um, so beginning of 2021, we started making a couple of them, and I think up to this point, we've made five of them. Um, so it's been a really fulfilling experience. So the first step into getting clients, honestly, is just reaching out to different people. Um, if you want to have a sample body of work of vlogs that you want to use as a pitch deck, make your own vlogs. Buy a little camera, use your iPhone, use your Android, whatever it is, you can make your own vlogs just to get practice in so that when you do get hired by a client, you have some experience doing so. The second thing that I wanna go over is my equipment and what kind of equipment I use. I like to keep my setup really, really light. And the reason for that is when you're making vlogs or you're traveling with people and just doing run and gun shooting, it is really difficult just to carry all the equipment that you need. It's very much just be in the moment, capture the moment as best as you can with all the elements around you. And that's really enough, you know, because if for vlogs, the way that I see them, it's more so of just, you want to make the fans of that individual feel like they were there. You know, the followers just really want to see what's going on in their life. They're not really worried about how beautiful it looks, although a higher production value is always nice. At the end of the day, the viewer is there just to see what their favorite person is doing and they really that's and that's really all they care about. I shoot the majority of my client vlogs on the Sony A7R Mark III. So that's this camera right here. I have a Rode shotgun mic that I attach on here. I currently have the Sony 16-35 f2.8 lens right here. Um, I recently just upgraded to the Sony A7S Mark III, which I am using to film this video, so I can't show you that. Um, and on that lens, I have the, the Sony 24-70 f2.8 
f2.8 which i actually primarily use as opposed to the 16 to 35 just because i feel like the focal length is a little bit better and if you're farther away from your subject the 70 millimeters really captures that well so i usually bring one of these cameras depending on who it is with the sony it uses since the shoots in 4k it'll take up a lot more memory space so kind of have to be careful with that um, but i usually just use up one memory card so for both of these cameras i have a 128 gigabyte memory card depending on the vlog if it's a five to seven minute vlog i'll usually shoot around 80 gigabytes worth of footage so it's not super extensive uh, i'm not the type of person that likes to just shoot overly you know for the most part in my head i know what the story is going to be depending on what the client has told me so if we take this vlog specifically with kevin and Jaden hostler and blake gray uh, kevin told me that they were just going to come over to play some basketball so i figured it would just be really raw footage of them you know playing some pickup getting a good amount of sound bites but at the end of the day all they're doing is playing basketball and there's only so many shots that you can get there um so i think for this one it was maybe like 70 gigabytes worth of footage and i shot it over the course of two to three hours so it wasn't the, cra the craziest thing and the thing about this vlog is actually out of all the vlogs that i've made for my clients this has the most views out of all of the videos that i made uh, for youtube specifically so i think this one has like 70,000 views or close to 70,000 views on YouTube right now on their channel. Um, so I'm really proud of that and I'm really happy that it had success, especially with Jaden and Blake's fan base. You know, don't overshoot, just be very mindful of what you feel like you need and depending on your turnaround time, however much time you have to edit, um, you know, you may want to shoot more or less depending on that story. But again, I shoot all my vlogs on Sony's. Um, they're really good in low light, especially if you're filming at night for whatever reason and you don't have the ability to bring on a little onboard light. Um, the Sony's are great, but again, whatever you have, make sure you take advantage of that equipment. And this thing is just keeps falling off and it's annoying me. Sorry about that. All right, the next piece of equipment that I have is my DJI Ronin S gimbal. Uh, I've had this for about two years or so. And again, I really bring this sparingly. So in this vlog with Kevin um, playing basketball, I did not bring this. Um, I went all handheld just because I could have brought this, but there just was gonna be a lot of action happening with them playing basketball. And I wasn't didn't wanna have to go between the gimbal and handheld and just having to set up the gimbal. Um, it does take a little bit of time, it takes like five minutes, but in those five minutes, you could miss a lot. And as someone who's capturing vlog content, um, sometimes there is opportunity for you to obviously tell your subject what to do, to do something again. Um, but for me, I like to keep it as natural and organic as possible. I hate having to ask people to redo things just because it doesn't feel as authentic as the original interaction would feel. And that's really, really important to me. I hate missing those moments and having to recreate them just because... I don't know, it, it just doesn't feel the same. So that's why I don't always bring my Ronin. It just takes a little bit of time to set up and um, I just feel like sometimes I'll miss those moments. However, if I do have a little bit more time or I wanna get some good establishing shots or B-roll just to start the vlog before we've even start, started filming, that's, that's when I'll throw my uh, camera on this gimbal and just get those shots. So um, if you have a gimbal, that's great, but I would say the majority of clients' vlogs are not shot with gimbals depending on the look you're going for. And, that handheld look has a little bit more of that raw, authentic feel, um, just feels more genuine. So um, yeah, but again, DJI Ronin S, um, if you are interested in a gimbal. The last piece of equipment that I usually bring to my shoots when I'm shooting vlogs is my DJI Mavic Pro. So this is the Mavic Pro Mark I. I've had this for like, three years, I believe, but it still gets the job done like crazy, shoots in 4K. 24 frames per second, I think it shoots at 2.7K at 60 frames per second, but this is honestly my little baby. I bring it to everything and it's done me really well. In this vlog, some shots that I got with this were just of the Hollywood Hills overview. The lighting was really nice because it was closer to sunset, so I got just views out all the way to the Pacific Ocean, views in the direction of downtown, views in the direction of the San Fernando Valley, um, some overhead shots of the basketball court because it's just, their property is just pretty insane. They have a huge lot on this cul-de-sac out in West Hollywood. So was able to get some really, really good establishing shots with this drone as well. And it really just adds another level of professionalism. In this vlog, I think there's maybe like 30 seconds worth of drone footage and I flew it around for maybe five minutes. So. 
Um, it wasn't too time consuming and honestly just added a whole nother level of production value um, to their vlog that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, obviously the storyline was still pretty great and it was gonna draw attention because of who was in the video. Um, but again, if you're looking for a drone, I love the DJI line of drones. There's drones at all types of price, price ranges. I think the cheapest one is around 500, maybe even less. Um, this one was a thousand when I bought it, but I think now it's, you can buy it for like $750. Moving on to the last step of my vlog process, of my vlog shooting process is the editing portion. So I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit all my vlogs. Um, my storage is in a Lacey hard drive. This is a five terabyte Lacey hard drive. This is my 2021. I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty dark, but I have it labeled 2020. My other hard drive is plugged into my computer right now so I can play the vlog in the background. Um, but the way that I organize it, um, I usually have it labeled in a folder um, by my client. So I have a folder for Kevin, just called Kevin Mejia. And then I have folders for each vlog that we shoot just to keep that organized. And then within that folder, um, I have folders for my video footage, my photo footage, my project file, and then I have a folder for my final video edit just because it's the best way to keep everything organized, at least for me, that I have come across. And you know, if I have to find something really quickly, that is the most efficient way for me to do so. Um, I edit everything in 1920 by 1080p at 24 frames per second. And that, in a nutshell, is my vlog editing process. Um, again, vlogs are really just subjective. Make them what you want, make them your own. And, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, a really great art form that's just super fun because you can interact with your client and your talent. Um, you know, it's not so much professional where it's like you have to be quiet. You can actually experience the moment with them. So um, I love filming vlogs. And if you wanna check out this vlog that I made with Kevin Mejia featuring Blake Gray and Jaden Hostler, it'll be linked in the description below. Um, just to give you, just so you can get a sense of my editing style. I hope you took some valuable information from this video, learn a little bit more about what it's like filming vlogs. Would love to see any vlog work that you're doing for any of your clients. DM me on Instagram at Saul Lopez. I answer every and any DM with any questions you might have. Um, love interacting with you all. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Stay safe out there. I might just hit it through a That's on my element. I like dog skins. Love a melanin. Talk, push, move, talk. When I'm stepping in.